Well, it appears they ran out of actors for this one, as two of the actors from the previous two installments are being reused, playing different roles. Well, meh. They aren't that bad actors, so... Onward. In 1666, a colonial town is gripped by a witch hunt that has deadly consequences for centuries to come. Meanwhile, teenagers in 1994 try to put an end to their town's curse before it's too late. Is this final installment of the Fear series any good? And what can we learn from this movie? Let's find out. Fear Street 1666 is the final and third part of this three-part series, and in my opinion, is the best. Fair warn, guys, the beginning's a bit slow and uh, rather humorous. Now keep in mind, though, 1666 is going back to when we're finding out about witch trials and rather depressing existence. Not a huge fan of using the same characters in the past. I think I understand why they were doing this, kind of like, oh, well, you're reliving, and so it's people you know or something in the past from the perspective of the characters of 1994 who's experiencing it in the past, I guess. But it just didn't fit for me, and it kind of pulled me away from the time period because I'm like, well, I don't think that's realistic. That being said, the movie itself did a really good job of wrapping everything up, making it very nice in a bow so we can see what's happening, what happened, and what's going on. Compared to the second one, which I liked a lot, but I kind of felt like it did just kind of... It was expose, and it didn't really needed to be there necessarily. What I like about this movie as well is there's a lot of proof of power of narrative. What you create, what you sell, people believe it or not believe it, really does affect what happens and the outcomes within the story. And you gotta see this a lot in this one. Which brings me to my deeper meaning. I have proof. It was some nights back when the full moon had risen just beside the sun. She witched me and led me to the woods. The guy in this clip created a narrative and sold it. Is it true? No. Does that really matter to a bunch of fearful people who are desperate for a solution? Mm -mm. Could Sarah Fear have told a narrative that would have saved her life and blamed the correct person along with demonstrating ample proof? Yeah, probably. But then there wouldn't have been a movie, right? Narratives are everywhere. Narratives are based on half-truths and truths. It's all about selling the right narrative to the right people. The funny slash irritating thing is us humans seem to barely be able to manage the real reality. So even the best intentions become tribal and political. When hearing someone's narrative or what they're telling you what's going on or they need you to do something, ask yourself, who's to benefit from this? Follow the money. It usually has to do with money and power. Who's gaining power and money from this? That's always a good indicator of what's going on. Some red flags or indicators of someone maybe having a narrative that's not the best for you and everyone else. The persons or persons claim to know the truth, the absolute truth, and the said truth is not allowed to be questioned or even examined. And if there are any discussions on the subject matter, it's always an echo chamber. They're patting each other on the back and saying how great it is. And you certainly can't make fun of it or make humor of it because it's sacred. I hope this helps you guys, it's helped me in order to somewhat not get pulled as much into the tribal narratives because that's what everyone else is believing, so I'm believing it too, thing. And that's what this movie reminded me of. In summary, Fear Street 1666 did pretty good at taking us through all the periods. It did have some issues with the, I thought, with the blood rules, like how did the blood work? How do you attract the bad guys? How do you get them to come? It was very vague at, the, at some points. It's like, wait, so that happened? So, okay, I just, I don't know if it's because I didn't remember the first one as much and where they explained the rules better. But overall, this movie really brought in all three stories really well. On a side note, I really think you could take this movie, add 20 minutes of expose, and only have this movie. It really does wrap it up all well. Overall, this series is very enjoyable and I do recommend it. And I recommend this movie as a topper to it. In my opinion, the best of all three. And that's why I'm giving Fear Street 1666 a... 7.5 out of 10. 7.5 out of 10. But hey guys, you don't have to stop here. There's some other videos here. There's the Fear Street, the rest of the review list there. And soon I'll have a ranking there too, by the way. Or there's another video here. Either way, you don't have to stop watching my videos. 